internacionales took Palencia already. It's been two weeks. There was really no resistance. So what are we gonna do? What about our daughter? Nothing. We're in a small village, so if anything happens, nothing's gonna change. I just want this to end already. Yeah. Pedro is a small and thin man, but what he lacks in brawn he makes up for in brains. He is one of the few men in this village who knows how to read, and one of the only two men who are able to drive a truck. The latter, he came to learn after he inherited the soda factory from his mother and father, who passed away when he was a small child, which placed him under the care of his aunt and uncle. The Nacionales in the village, Paredes and Navas, have announced that there will be a representative from the government visiting each house to evaluate all able-bodied men. It wasn't stated why, but it's obvious that they are drafting men to push the front in Las Terias and all northern areas that have still not fallen. Pedro's wife prays for her husband because the money made from the factory is what allows him to buy food in these times where food is scarce. Without him, the factory stops producing and will probably be seized, just like her father's farm, which was taken over in order to feed the army. Pedro is not really scared. He knows that thanks to his size and complexion, he won't be able to fight in the front lines except if they are extremely desperate for cannon fodder. I'm guessing you know why I'm here. I'm gonna need you to take your shirt off, please. Yes, sir. Please raise your arms. Stretch. Turn around and hold your breath. Good. You can put your shirt back on now. The man states that they have asked around the village for drivers, and some people have pointed to him as a competent driver. He asks about what he knows and how he came to know it. Yes sir, I have a soda factory just outside of the village. I need a truck to move the soda around. I see. The other men responded, and quickly the conclusion that they had escaped was reached. Pedro could return to his usual post after that. Continues to explain that he will be drafted and sent to the north. She is shocked and asks what happened. He explains the situation with the truck and how the army needs drivers before taking a swig. This is not what he wanted, but he explains his reasoning. He doesn't like the communists or the anarchists. He would like them jailed if he could. So to fight in this side of the war is better than the alternative. The wife gets mad at the truck, gets mad at the war and the world. What will she do now? She can't take care of their daughter by herself, and losing the income from the factory will be a big hit, taking into consideration that the Nationalist army pays next to nothing a week and charges their soldiers for their uniform and tools. Pedro tells her to calm down and explains what is going to happen. He'll have to leave next week to a military barracks where he'll be sent to wherever they need him. He tells her that according to the man that scouted him, drivers don't see much conflict, so he'll hopefully be alright. He will try to get the factory working somehow without him, and will not let her or their daughter starve. We want to give away a life without a better way this point. 
we don't think we know we're going to be shocked just by being in authorities. As if they weren't religious themselves, they feel come very much like an asylum. They discuss their Christian values and the anarchists are brought into the conversation. They have killed priests and burned churches for the longest time. In fact, the anarchists have revolted in Asturias and have taken hold of some of the nation's most important minds. Before they can continue any further, Pedro gets called by high command. He won't be driving soldiers to the fronts. He'll be the private driver for one of the senior officers in the Basque country. He is expected to be quiet about anything he sees and be ready to give his life for the man he's driving in case of an emergency. Knowing that he has nothing else to do, Pedro of course agrees and does the Nationalist salute. Pedro is on leave now for a week and he's back in Paredes to visit his family. His wife tells him that she is alright and so is the daughter. He remarks that she is thinner, almost like him, and asks what the general feel of the town is like. She says spirits are high, but the government repression has become harder and most of the village leftists have either left or died already. She mentions how she didn't know the local butcher was a Trotskyist and how much harder it has become to get meat since she and her husband were executed. Is looking promising. Uh, if we look bad, you just have to see how we left them. Yes, I've heard all about it on the radio. Oh no, they don't, they don't tell everything that happens. He mentions how the Nationalists already took Toledo, Asturias, and basically all of the north. He believes that the war should not take more than a few months to blow over. He mentions how he met a German when he was driving his boss around, and that his Spanish was better than he expected. They are mentioning Guernica and the different enemy positions in it. Apparently they are going to conduct a bombing run on the little village. It's a telegram. Pedro will not be returning to his usual post next week. Instead of driving the officer, he will be assisting the private police for a raid as the drivers come down with an infection. He now understands that he will not be able to escape violence and he tells his wife as so. He tells her that everything will be all right and their daughter will see him again. Nothing, just drive some guys around. It's nothing too big. In any case, how about you bring the kid here and we'll have them together, huh?
The day is here, and Pedro is standing in front of the building. He drove the guys in, and them, being secret police, are dressed in civilian clothing. Pedro takes a deep breath and enters the building. He knows not what he will find in there. Hopefully they will surrender without putting up much of a fight, but that is wishful thinking. Pedro remembered his daughter waiting back home with his wife that he loved very much. Something that he couldn't explain spurred from within him, and he closed the door. Pedro drove the official for the rest of the war until it ended two years later. He never had to shoot his gun in the four years the war raged, and he returned home to his family. He had a son and a daughter later, and he saw them grow under Franco's dictatorship. He sold his factory to some relatives and left for Madrid where he opened a bar near the city center. He lost a finger in an accident cutting Hamani Barico, and at some point came down with tuberculosis, which he survived. His youngest daughter married a Venezuelan doctor and moved away. He passed away peacefully at the ripe age of 86, and his wife followed soon after. He never knew what happened to that family that he didn't report. Maybe they changed their identity and moved to France. Maybe they never made it and were caught later. They were just one family that, like many others, were affected by the Civil War. <laughs> 